I'm Lynn Smith, and welcome to the Bigfoot Project. This happened in May in the summer of 2014, near Bridgewater, Connecticut. It was the early evening, and our golden retriever was barking loudly. This was not unusual, as there are many deer behind our house. Our backyard consists of a large 20-acre field leading into a wooded area. When I went outside to call the dog in, I saw six or seven deer running like heck, like they were being chased. I looked behind them, and in the tall grass, a large, hairy animal was chasing after them on two legs, towering above the grass, which was about four feet at the time. We see occasional black bears, but this was not a bear. I am convinced it was a Sasquatch. Then, later in the season, I was outside at around nine o'clock with a friend. We had a small fire going. The coyotes were yipping in the far corner, and in the opposite back corner, there was a large, screech-like sound, and the coyotes went dead silent. About a month after my sighting, as me and my friend were hitting golf balls into my field, I saw suspicious activity lower in the field. After about two minutes, we realized it was a Sasquatch. It stood up and towered over the grass, which at that time was about five feet tall. We stood there watching it for about five minutes until it retreated to the woods. The hairy creature was clearly walking on two legs. There was no doubt in my mind we saw another Sasquatch or that same individual from last month. After talking to my dad, he had lived on the property for years. He too had seen Sasquatch years ago as a boy. This sighting happened when I was a young boy of about seven or eight years old. It was a cloudy fall day and I was playing near a window in a second story farmhouse when something caught my eye. I watched as a hairy, nine-foot-tall creature walked uphill across the front yard. It had huge strides as if it were in a hurry. It kept looking back as it walked with its long arms swinging. When it turned its head, it had to also turn its shoulders to be able to look at a 90-degree angle. I stood watching it walk along when it appeared to look up and make eye contact with me, only for a second. It never broke its stride. Its eyes glowed like a raccoon or a cat at night when light is shined in their eyes. What frightened me was that it was still daylight. I didn't really get freaked out until it disappeared around the side of the house. That's when I ran into the kitchen where my parents were playing cards with another couple. I tried to get their attention, but they didn't have time for a whiny kid who wanted a cookie or candy. It wasn't until they escorted me out the front door and slammed into my face that they figured out something was wrong. There was no way I was going to hang around outside with a monster in the area. I flipped out, screaming, beating, kicking the door, and crying for them to let me in. It was only a couple or three seconds, and they knew something was terribly wrong. They let me in, and I explained what I had seen through tears. My father and his friend went outside to look around, probably thinking they would find a loose cow. I never forgot the looks on their faces when they saw the footprints that dwarfed their own. My dad's friend was a tall man of around six foot two or three. When he stretched his legs to step from one footprint to another, it was next to impossible. Their disbelief had turned to fear. They did, however, want to follow the tracks that went across a field that had been plowed recently. I freaked out again. They seemed to understand this time. They decided that going in a car would be better. We drove down a road a short distance and found where it crossed and went up a hill. The tracks disappeared and that seemed fine with everyone. Hi, my name is Mike, and in 2009 I was 16 years old and had just bought my first truck. I was working as a bar back in a local town. When I got out of work, it was close to 2 a.m. As a newly licensed driver, I didn't want to go home. I wanted to drive around with the window down, blurring music while smoking the cigarettes I took from my mom when she wasn't looking. The normal route home would take me about 20 minutes, but I decided to take a very roundabout way, so my commute home was going to take an hour and a half. As I got within 15 minutes of my house, I turned on to the last back road before hitting the main road that would take me home. The road I turned on to went into a steep incline for about 60 yards, and then there was a bridge across the river after the oaks, pines, and maples faded suddenly into farmland. I was halfway down the incline when I saw something start to move on the right side of the road. Having grown up in New England, I knew to slam the brakes because the deer in that area would wreck a full-size pickup. I came to stop right before the bridge, maybe about 50 feet away. 
What I saw was a large creature walk across the road in front of me. The angle of my headlights only illuminated the lower part of the creature, which was walking on two feet. It was covered in dark brown or black hair, and as its hands swung back and forth, they would swing well below the hip line. It cleared the two-lane road in maybe four steps, never breaking stride. The creature stepped into the wood line and then turned, heading down the embankment toward the river. I sat there stunned until a foul smell hanging in the air snapped me back to reality. I hit the gas and must have drove double the speed limit the whole way home. When I got home, I went into my room, closed all the blinds, and stayed awake until the sun rose. In 2011, I had just graduated high school and decided to go on a three-day camping and fishing trip in People State Forest, which has some of the best trout fishing in the country. I woke up first thing in the morning, put on my waders, and walked about two miles to one of my favorite spots. As I entered the water, the sun was rising and the birds were singing. I fished for maybe an hour or two when I became very uneasy. The hair on the back of my neck was standing up, and I began to trace the wood line surrounding the river with my eyes. As I stood in the middle of the river, no longer fishing, I realized that it was quiet. No squirrels running through the leaves, not even the wind was blowing. As I stood there, desperately trying to see any sort of movement or anything unusual in the wood line, there was a loud splash of water about ten feet to my right. I started backing up out of the water. I didn't know what I was going to do, but I knew I wanted to get out of there. As my heel hit the dry sand of the bank, I saw a rock flying out of the wood line and hit the water right in front of me, but I didn't see what had thrown it. Once both my feet were on dry land, I turned around and started to walk as calmly as I could back up the trail to where I parked my jeep. There was a good growth of trees between the trail and the river, so I quickly lost sight of the water as I walked. I made it about 50 feet down the trail when I heard a loud splashing sound. It sounded like something very big had crossed the river very quickly. I must admit at this point, I started moving much quicker than just a walk. The entire trip back to the jeep, I felt stalked. When I would move, I would hear double footsteps, and when I stopped, it stopped, and the air was filled with a pungent smell, similar to what I had smelled in my truck two years before. I made it back to my jeep and hopped in, still wearing my waders. As I started the engine, a large rock bounced off the hood. It hit so hard that it left a dent. I peeled out of that parking lot, leaving my tanded gear where I left them. Later in the day, I came back to that spot with my friend. This friend is one of the only people I've spoken about these encounters to, so I asked him to accompany me to get my gear. I told him what had happened. He in turn shared that he had a very similar experience at a lake a few miles from the state forest. Grabbing my gear went without incident. In 2017, I was turkey hunting in the early morning. Spring in New England is a mix-up between bitterly cold and wildly warm. This morning was a cold one, snow still on the ground. I was sitting at the base of a large tree, completely covered in camo, with my 12-gauge resting on my knee. In front of me was a snow-covered cornfield with only a few dry stalks still standing. I had never been to this area before and thought it was kind of cool because this field was on the top of a mountain and very difficult to get to. I watched the sunrise and saw a few turkey hens poke through the snow. I was waiting for the big toms to show up when all the hens suddenly froze and started looking around. At first I thought I'd been spotted, but the hens all started running in my direction. I sat there motionless as they ran into the woods around me. I was very confused for a few seconds and began thinking that maybe a bear was in the woods on the other side of the field, which didn't worry me too much since black bears tend to avoid people. I sat there listening to the wind blow and hoping the turkeys would come back when I started to smell that same pungent smell. Within an instant, my heart was racing so fast that it felt like it was going to explode out of my chest. I started to stand up, when I heard a noise I can only describe as a mix of a wolf's howl and a tiger's roar. I listened to it echo across the snow for a second and dropped to one knee. I took the choke out of my shotgun and dropped the three rounds of turkey shot that were in the tube. I loaded three slugs into the tube, another in the chamber. I clicked the safety off and stood up. I started looking for the trailhead I had come up when I heard the noise again, this time much louder and much closer. I've been shooting all my life, and I've never seen my hands shake around a weapon like my hands were shaking in that moment. 
It very quickly dawned on me that I was five miles from my truck over very rough terrain. So I started down the trail, turning in circles every few seconds to check behind me and never dropping the barrel of my shotgun. Every ten minutes or so, I would hear the noise again, sometimes close, sometimes far. I was also hearing footsteps in the snow and tree knocks. It took almost an hour to get back to my truck. About a quarter mile before the parking lot was the big wooden sign for the trail. Once I passed that sign, everything stopped. The birds started chirping again. I saw a few squirrels, but I never dropped the barrel of my gun. I got in my truck and peeled out of there. Of all my experiences, this is the only one that gave me nightmares. The sound of that howl and roar is engraved in my mind, and I don't think I'll ever forget it. My last experience happened in Florida in January of 2023. I'd moved to the Florida Panhandle to take a job as a sheriff's deputy. For the first eight months, I lived in a single wide trailer, alone, deep in the woods. There was one other trailer near me, but the woman who lived there was rarely home, as she worked for a ride-share food delivery company. When I say this place was in the middle of nowhere, I'm not exaggerating. My only other neighbor was my landlord, who lived almost three miles down the road from me. The first month I lived there, it was peaceful and quiet. I would come home from work and watch TV or play guitar, and I didn't have any problems. Then things started happening. At first, it was just things left on my porch would be moved or knocked over. One morning, I came out to find that the front end of my car appeared to have been picked up and moved to the right, so it was now at an angle. To be honest, I was so busy with the police academy that I didn't really give any of it much thought. I figured I must have parked at a weird angle and that my stuff was being gone through by raccoons or stray dogs. Then one night, I was laying in my bed, which was at the front of the trailer, and I heard a loud bang on the side of the house. I grabbed my pistol and went outside to investigate. I went around the entire trailer and didn't see anything that would explain the noise, so I went back inside, now fully awake. This became a routine almost every night. The best way I could describe it as is as a terrifying game of ding-dong ditch. This continued for a month or two before I decided I wasn't going outside anymore to check the sounds. The banging continued for a week before it escalated. First, it was multiple bangs on the siding, and now I was hearing grunts outside my bedroom window. I honestly didn't know what to do, so when these events happened, I would load my rifle and place it next to my bed. I figured as long as whatever it was never tried to enter the trailer, I could ignore it until I had the money to move. About four months into these events, I was bringing in groceries, and the bag containing apples broke before I brought them in. I looked at the apples on the ground and thought, Screw it, I'll just go get more. I admitted it was a lazy morning. That night was a quiet one, so I was able to get some sleep. The next morning, as I walked out to the car, I noticed all the apples were gone, which I thought was weird, since raccoons would leave scraps behind, and I couldn't see any stray dogs eating apples. As I drove to work that morning, I thought maybe whatever was banging had taken the apples. At first I thought the idea was laughable, but on my way home I bought more apples and as I walked into the house, I left three on the porch, honestly, to see if it would work. It was a quiet night again, and again the apples were gone when I woke up the next morning. So that began what I refer to as the deal. I would leave apples, and whatever it was would leave me alone. This was further enforced when I flew home for a week to see my family, and when I returned, my porch was destroyed. Everything was thrown all over the lawn, and the mud was covered in large footprints. I went inside and grabbed some apples and left them on the porch. As expected, they were gone in the morning, but unfortunately, it was a torrential downpour, and the footprints were all gone. I continued the deal until the end of June, when I moved, and never had another noisy night. Want to win some great prizes? All you have to do is listen to the Bigfoot Marathon video, posted on the Bigfoot Case Files channel, find out the secret word, and comment which story was your favorite. You'll then be eligible to win some really cool stuff. The link to that video is on your screen and below. Good luck!